We're in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and we're here to get to the heart of the street food culture. We can't wait to show you all the delicious street food we've found in this amazing city. Cambodia is a country with an intriguing food culture, a culture that requires you to delve beneath the surface to uncover the rich and unique flavors of its cuisine. This is our first video from Cambodia, and we're in the capital of Phnom Penh to share with you some of the city's best food. We take you into a local wet market to eat at one of the most exciting street food stalls we've ever encountered, serving up a crispy, gooey coconut rice cake, the ultimate Khmer snack, and devour a phenomenal beef curry from a popular local coffee shop. We eat smoky grilled sticky rice and banana at the biggest market in the city and share with you a quintessential Cambodian breakfast of fermented rice noodles and fish curry. In this Cambodia series, we'll take you into the heart of the nation's cuisine, from traditional dishes to delicious street food. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. We're so stoked to be exploring the food culture here in Cambodia and sharing the best food that we can find in this amazing country with you. The Khmer food culture is actually the oldest in Southeast Asia, but we find it's often the ignored cuisine of this region. It's often compared to its neighbors, Thailand and Vietnam and the East and West, and the cuisine always comes off second best. But that doesn't mean that there's nothing good to eat here because this country is packed with amazing food. The food culture is really rich and we can't wait to share what we find with you. Our first stop is this really popular local spot which is right on the corner of this street here. But what's really neat is that this place is huge. It stretches all across this corner and right around the other side as well. And it's super neat because all of the food prep is done right on the street. So let me just show you. They are really uh, well known for their noodle soup. So you've got all of the broth lined up here. And the ladies over there are chopping up all the pork bones and whatnot to make the broth. And then over here, if you just follow me, is prep being done for more of the noodles. So there's a huge pot of broth here. It's really raging. This place is packed with people here for their morning breakfast. But we're not eating any of the things that I just pointed out to you. We're here for a really special Cambodian beef curry. We ate it the other day and it was phenomenal. We had to share it with you. So let's go and um, find ourselves a seat in order. Okay. I mentioned before that this local coffee shop is famous for its rice noodles and we did eat their rice noodles the other day but the winner of the meal that we had previously was this Cambodian beef curry. It is simply phenomenal. So you can see it's uh, chunks of beef wallowing in this uh, gravy and then we've got some raw onion and some um, I think that's coriander over the top and it comes with a warm baguette. So um, Cambodia used to be a French protectorate and so that's why the, the French tradition of bread has carried on. But before I get into the food I was uh, looking around before and trying to work out where the big pot of curry was. Um, and I've just spotted it. So let's just go and have a nosy because this thing is just so phenomenal. It's so rich in color and flavor and smells. So today, oh, it's chingan. <laughs> so good. So this is this huge pot of uh, beef curry and it is so dark. It's a beautiful, rich, golden, browny, red color. Oh, let's go and get into the food. I'm dying to get into this curry gravy, so let's rip um, some of this baguette off. Oh, look how crispy and crunchy that baguette is. It's perfect. All right, and let's just dunk it in this gravy. Oh, look at that. So rich looking. Okay. Mmm. Oh my gosh. I've got to go again. Mmm! Mmm! I am in heaven. I haven't even eaten the beef yet. But the gravy is such a beautiful, rich flavour. So it's got chilli in it, but it has absolutely no heat at all. Uh, 
the 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 flavor of the chili is more of a, a sweetness. So the, the curry is very sweet, but it's still very spicy in the sense that you can taste all of those different spices that they've put in. So cinnamon and star anise and there's uh, garlic and a bit of ginger. It's really rich in spices, but not in chili heat. It's amazing. Mm. And that baguette is the perfect texture. It's really soft on the inside, but crunchy on the outside. Let's just get a taste of this beef. So you can see that the beef, this bit has got some tendon on there and it's cooked right down and, um, and braised really low and slow. So hopefully it'll be really tender. Let's uh, give it a taste. I'm gonna um, eat it with a bit of this fresh, re uh, fresh raw onion. insane the beef is melt in your mouth tender including that tendon it just fell apart in my mouth this is unreal this dish is absolutely phenomenal one of the best things that we've eaten so far in Cambodia and I'm washing it down with an iced coffee they roast their own beans here so they're well known for that too oh. It's been sweetened with condensed milk, so it's quite sweet, but also has a, a bitter coffee flavor. This place is really neat. It's all go. Getting to see all of the cooking right on the street and being able to get up in, uh, get up in there and, and watch it being done is really awesome. And everyone's just looking really happy, tucking into their food. The streets of Cambodia are hectic, so they really need to get around. While we've been here researching for our video, and while we were going to film, we've walked a lot, and the streets are amazing to be part of. But they also have tuk-tuks here, so we've jumped in a tuk-tuk to get to a market for our next street food. And I love riding in the tuk-tuks here in Phnom Penh. It's so fun, you, you feel like you're really immersed in the city because action is happening all the time. You never know what you're going to see. Let's get to our next street food. We've made our way to the biggest wholesale market in the city. Now this place is, there's not so much food here actually. Inside the market, it's all goods. But on the outside of the market, there is a ton of food. So the market itself, I mean the true market, is not really for food. But because there's so many people working here, it is surrounded with food. We just uh, took out this little girl's scooter, sorry. <laughs> but look, I mean, even over here, there's all this suckling pig lined up, um, roasted suckling pig. We found a little um, treat just up here, and we've got to show you this. Surrounding this huge market are all types of uh, street food vendors, and one of our favourites is just up ahead. She's got a really neat setup, and what she makes is super delicious. It's a grilled sticky rice um, and banana dish, and here she is right here. So today, next up there. These are so chingan. <laughs> so this is her set up here. She's got all these little parcels of sticky rice and banana and it's all cooking over charcoal. I love how the, the parcels almost look like Christmas crackers. Uh, it's really neat. Yeah. We've got the goods, but I just want to show you the setup a bit more because this is a very neat market. So she's got the grill lined up. All the charcoals are down here and they are ridiculously hot, of course. So I don't know how she's doing it. She's um, touching them all with her hands as well. <laughs> come through, come through. Oh, <laughs> and all the bananas and rice lined up on the grill. The, the banana leaves are blackened. They've got a beautiful smell coming off them. And she's sitting up on a little platform. Next to her is a pork salad. There's a noodle salad. There's people everywhere. And she's doing a roaring trip. A lot of people coming in, so I like a little production line. Gets that rice onto the banana leaf, banana goes on, wraps it, plucks a toothpick through to seal it on that grill and flips them a few times and they're ready to go and they're super hot. Oh, these are going to be good. Let's go get out of everyone's way and eat these. I cannot tell you how neat this environment is. There is so much going on. So the store's just in there. Check out behind the camera here. It's just absolute bedlam on these streets so this is a very exciting market and so this is a great little snack to have just to chill out for a minute in the sun and enjoy a snack so you can see all that rice so it's, she takes the rice pops it on a banana leaf 
puts a sweet banana inside, wraps it, clamps it shut, and then once it's been cooked and unwrapped, this is the result. This one here is nice and charred, so look at all that char on the banana. And if we just rip it apart, we'll see that sweet banana inside. Oh, look at it, it's all sticky and oozy, that banana. Oh man. Mm. Oh, the bananas in the tropics. Ridiculously sweet. But the rice on the outside is just heaven as well. So you've got super sweet banana inside and that sticky rice on the outside. And because that rice has been crisped up over the charcoals and the banana leaf, you've got that earthy flavor from the banana leaf and the stickiness of the rice where it's, where it's been on the charcoal. So it's nice and soft inside, but on the outside, it's all sticky. Actually, look over here. This shows how the bananas in this part of the world, so the massive banana stalls across the road, those little short sort of lady finger bananas, and they're just sweet and delicious. This is a very good snack here. We've left the chaos of the market and we've come to a more peaceful part of Phnom Penh. We're here to share with you a Khmer dish and it's called Nam Ban Chok. It's made up of fermented rice noodles and a fish curry gravy. Let's go and order. This is a small mom and pop restaurant selling this one dish, which is called Nam Ban Chok. And you can see it's very basic. So they've got these big um, stock pots full of the curry. Just over here, there's two types of curry. There's chicken and there's fish. And then there's a, a sort of a bowl, which is, or basket of uh, fermented rice noodles and all sorts of um, trimmings, which go into the Nam Ban Chok. So, this is a quintessential Cambodian dish and it's often eaten for breakfast but this place serves it all day long. We ate here the other day and it just blew our minds. So you, you, can't, you get your, your Nam Ban Chok, so this is it here. And it all starts with these which are the fermented rice noodles and you can see that they're wallowing in a, a gravy, a fish gravy and it's yellow from um, turmeric and there's galangal in there and then hiding underneath should be a whole lot of goodies so yeah you can see that there's a uh, banana flour which is this uh, purpley white stuff here and then there's cucumber and then this here is water lotus stem <laughs> now it doesn't end here the next thing you've got to do is customize your bowl of noodles so we've got a whole tray of things we have got some pickles we've got some chilies some limes some long beans a bunch of herbs so we've got fish wort we've got mint we've got all sorts in there and then also some edible flowers so these are sesbania flowers they're very crunchy and quite sweet so what we've got to do is just grab what we want to uh, make up our bowl of noodles so I'm gonna um, add some long beans for some crunch and then some lime oh, for some tanginess and grab a bunch of those herbs as well this is what I love about um, the food here in Cambodia it's very fresh, it's very fragrant and makes use of all of these beautiful regional herbs and vegetables and you get to create a really lively bowl of food. So I was saying before that the food here in Cambodia often gets uh, compared to the food in Thailand and in Vietnam, so it's neighbours. But the food culture here is one of the oldest in Southeast Asia and so of course that history informs a lot of the the dishes of the region so you get a lot of similar dishes and whatnot this dish is very similar to one in thailand called kanom jin which is rice noodles and curry but i think what makes this super unique and cambodian is all of these accompaniments that go with it so it's these these flowers here the sesvania flowers are edible flowers you add them to your dish very common here and it makes it just uniquely cambodian look how beautiful it looks it's just a riot of different colors you've got the yellow from that curry gravy all right mm. Mm. 
there's no other word to describe it but fresh and vibrant it's a very light dish the rice noodles are very slippery the curry gravy is very subtle so it's not spicy it just has a beautiful spice sort of like the curried uh, beef that I had this morning you can taste the turmeric and the, the galangal in there but it's not um, there isn't chili Heat. You can always add heat with these bird's eye chilies if you want. And these um, these edible flowers, the Cispania flowers, are also very crunchy as well, so they add to the texture. It's unreal. I want to get a taste of these pickles as well. Mmm. Ooh. Oh, quite spicy. So very sour and also very spicy with chili. So is it I? We've made our way to another market now. Now this one is very different to the market we were at this morning, which was more just wholesale stuff with food on the outside. This one is a proper market with heaps of food inside. So lots of food stalls in here. And there's a place back here that we've eyed up and it is one of the coolest little street food stands I have ever seen. So come and check it out. This Kamai snack is so mouthwatering. It's called Nungkua and it's made up of a, it's basically a coconut savory pudding which has got spring onions in it and this little stall is such a neat setup so there's like four or five people working and they're making the little puddings in these griddle pans let's see if we can get closer next looks very deep good <laughs> so they've got about four um, special griddle pans going and they're making the num crook so that num num crook yeah. <laughs> hard to pronounce this, uh, the name of this snack but the, the lady's just teaching me so num krua. Yeah. <laughs> num krua so you can see her oiling up the griddle pan and then they're pouring the batter in and, and what comes out is this really crispy sort of looking ball um, and there's spring onions all in there the smell is crazy they're cooking over charcoal and so it's really hot as well I think we should go and get a seat and tuck into these <laughs> <laughs> I was saying this is one of the best street food stores I'd ever come across. This is why I love that I have to have the camera up here for you guys to be able to see it. So one, two, three, four, five people cooking away and another team member preparing them for eating. And it's crazy how they've got these, so there's four different pans. So there's the five people, four of them have a pan each and one has the pourer. So the lady in the red hat, she's just pouring in all the butter for them. And then they're just flicking those little balls over so they get perfect and golden on the outside. But I love that the camera has to be up here to truly take in the scene. <laughs> How seriously cool is this market? There is so much going on. So the, the smells and the sounds and the sights in here. This is a true Southeast Asian market experience. Absolutely love it. And I do not see why Cambodia should be overlooked as a food destination because it's incredible. Some of the best experiences we've had in Southeast Asia here in Cambodia, and this is definitely one of them. And look at these golden balls. So they've been cooked up on those pans to perfection. I love how they just flick them and move them around in the pan to really crisp up the outside. So you can see if I pick it up, it's really golden all around, but inside it's almost hollow. So, and really sticky and runny still inside. So that's the ball made up of the rice flour and the coconut milk, um, spring onions, so a very um, simple batter. And then to go with that, you get this dipping sauce. So this is uh, coconut milk again with some fish sauce in it. So pretty much texture of water. So very runny, not creamy at all. And we've got some chili here. So I'm going to put some, wow, that chili's crazy consistency. So really tightly packed. So there's a lot of chilies in there. So we dump a big dollop of chili in there, mix it in. Oh, look at all that color coming out of the chili. All right. And now I'll grab a ball. Now I'm going to grab this one that's already got a bit of a hole in it because I have a feeling these are going to be the hottest things in the world because the heat coming off all the charcoal over there. Even from here, and I'm a, I'm a meter or so away, it is just absolutely radiating off my skin. I don't know how the team is sitting there all day doing that. It's crazy hot, but I'm a bit worried about the temperature of the ball. So give it a bit of a dunk, get it coated in the chili and the coconut milk. 
โอ้ยอืมอืมโอ้ man โอ้ that's the most simple flavor imaginable texture wise it's super interesting because look at it here in my chopsticks I'll just try and turn around oh it's breaking oh no I've lost it so look at that so you can see it's all creamy on the inside and all golden on the on the outside so it's super super crunchy but then super creamy but that creaminess almost has a wateriness to it so it's so light that batter and and the flavor is the same almost has a bit of a wateriness to its its flavor it's so light in taste and the thing that really picks it up is this sauce which just um, coats it now I've, I've lost it while I've been talking so it's now truly coated in that chili and that fish and coconut uh, milk sauce oh. mm. a little bit salty fantastic text chili the chili is a great hit and the stand is one of the best I've ever seen with the most amazing people they're the most lovely people with smiles all around and I like here because it's very compact as well so the next stand is right here I've got a stand that I could reach out and touch here same thing behind Sheena so it's all really compact all the vendors are chatting and laughing they all think the camera's hilarious such a cool environment